the birth of civilization came as a result of one thing the supreme control of water. Modern societies don't differ too much in that regard either. Those that fail to manage this critical resource crumble. Yet water isn't something that's so simple to deal with. A waterway can quickly be blocked by debris, and depending on the location, this can spell disaster if left unresolved. In order to combat these issues, humanity has long used dredging, or the removal of sediment and debris from bodies of water. The ancient Egyptians were likely the first to do so, and they did so extensively. By cutting into and around the Nile, they were able to distribute nutrient-rich water to farmlands, ensuring the success of their agrarian society. This has continued into today, where the necessity of dredging has expanded far beyond farming. Today, around 80% of global trade by volume is carried by ship. In order to maintain functionality of the world's many harbors, dredging is required at every single port. Otherwise, disruptions will occur that can cascade into massive global issues. On top of that, it's believed that a variety of natural dangers, including flooding, droughts, and even the pollution of the ocean, can be mitigated with the correct application of dredging tools. However, doing so is more than just expensive. It can be anywhere from arduous to downright dangerous to deploy capable machinery in waterways. Let's say a drag line was put to the task. It might be massive and powerful, but its limited reach and extremely slow movement would make it impractical at best, and worthless in larger locations. Even boats mounted with arms can have difficulty with reaching awkward spots, like might be found in a marsh or bog. Ultimately, restoring the flow of waterways by removing blockages is the first step towards the right course of action. To do so, however, requires smart solutions that are able to both effectively work in the varying conditions of waterways and effortlessly and affordably be transported to and around these areas. Despite the challenges, there is an impressive machine built for the job. It comes in the form of a boat with legs and an arm with the ability to travel on land, marsh, bog, and water alike. Welcome to a special documentary from Lord Gizmo, where today we'll be covering the amazing Watermaster. Around the mid-1980s, the London MCE Group found that their homeland, Finland, a nation of nearly 190,000 lakes, had a complete lack of suitable equipment for maintaining its endless shallow coastal and inland waters. They needed something that was capable and practical, something that could move and be moved anywhere it needed to be and still complete its duties. As such, they developed the Watermaster, introduced to the market in 1986. The Watermaster is equipped with an excavator assembly, giving it substantial dredging power. Its compact design allows it to travel by road without any special permissions, using a standard truck and trailer. Once on the site, it becomes highly capable of traversing. It is able to float like a boat, something that many other machines accomplish. Part of what makes the Watermaster unique, however, are its legs, which allow it to traverse across any breaks or narrows in the water. While these features may seem odd or unreasonable, it has proven itself with decades of service, with hundreds of units being used across 80 countries. Traversal isn't the Watermaster's only strong suit, though. A highly capable and modular. One available boom attachment is a cutter pump, something that is primarily found on larger cutter section dredger ships. The cutter pump uses a hollow drill to cut into the substrate, sucking up material as it moves along. The pump is able to then transport this a maximum distance of 1.5 kilometers away. It's still quite capable of backhoe dredging, however, with buckets as large as 1,000 liters, or about 1.3 cubic yards. Jakarta is the capital city of Indonesia, with a population of over 10 and a half million people, holding the unfortunate title of the world's fastest sinking city. In fact, according to NASA, 40% of the metropolis lies below sea level today. There are parts of the city that have dropped 3 to 4 meters from where they once were. That's over 13 feet. That is due to the population's dire need for fresh water that's piped from aquifers, which can no longer be resupplied, 
even by Indonesia's three-season torrential downfall. There are 13 rivers running through Jakarta. However, this doesn't help, as much of the city's waterways are blocked. According to one report, the city saw as much as 70% of its waterways blocked in 2016, filled with aquatic vegetation, pollution, and sediment. In response, authorities deployed the Watermaster. In the Sri Lankan city of Negombo, authorities did the same, with restoration works desperately needed. The Watermaster comes standard with two different cutter crowns, one for vegetation and the other for sediment. However, trash poses an issue for standard suction dredgers, rapidly causing blockages and leading to high downtimes. Excavators couldn't handle digging past depths of 1 meter, meaning they were not an option for the required 2.5 meter depths. However, the Watermaster had a trick up its sleeve. Their patented cutting knife system, which prevented oversized objects from entering the pipe by employing adjustable blades to tear apart debris before it could make its way into the pump. Using this technology, the fleet of Watermasters were able to successfully dredge 12,000 cubic meters of silt and urban refuse from the city's critical waterways. Another story of the Watermasters' ventures lies in Mexico, where an invasive plant has been wreaking havoc on the local water ecosystems. The water hyacinth is a plant that produces a beautiful purple flower but has proven to be a dangerous invasive species for Mexican waterways. These plants grow on the surface of water and cover large areas, blocking out sunlight and killing any aquatic plants below. This leads to a chain reaction, causing reduced oxygen content and effectively culling local fish and other wildlife that are a part of the delicate food chain. That's on top of causing waterway blockages that make boat travel difficult and can ultimately lead to floods. Watermaster yet again had the right tool for the job. By using a 2.75 meter wide rake, the unwanted vegetation is removed from the surface of the water, along with any other floating refuse mixed in. The same is done across the world, where invasive water surface growths are mitigated by the amazingly capable machine. In Xi'an, one of China's most densely populated cities, there is a lake in Beach Blossom Pool Park that was heavily polluted, filled with sludge and covered with vegetation. Using its rake, the Watermaster cleaned up around 40,000 square meters in just four and a half days. Going back to the more traditional methods, the company does make, as previously mentioned, buckets. Specifically, they make a 600-liter toothed bucket and a 1,000-liter toothless bucket. In conjunction with the arm, these are able to excavate at depths of up to 5 meters. A clamshell bucket can also be employed for barrel excavations or for handling loose material, though ultimately it can accomplish the same job. The Watermaster has adapted to more than just dredging operations. For instance, it can be equipped with a pile driver for use on construction projects. One interesting application is in the mining industry. After ore is extracted from the ground, it needs to be separated into parts. In this Chilean copper mine, the leftover waste material, called tailings, are dumped as slurry into a tailing pond. These can prove to be environmental hazards, especially over the long term. Here, the Watermaster's incredible pumping power plays a critical role. In conjunction with additional pump units, the material is taken to a safe location, either for dumping or removal. While we're still looking at Chile, the Watermaster was also deployed in a lagoon dredging project in order to help expand a pulp mill. Before construction could fully begin, nearly 120,000 cubic meters of organic waste needed to be removed from the plant's aeration lagoon. The Watermaster had to remove the mud and felt to be collected within geosynthetic tubes, while water was removed to be recycled. As is clear from the footage, these tubes were massive, containing tons of sediment, working like garbage bags. Watermaster's pumping abilities came in handy here, able to take the material a kilometer and a half away, that's nearly a mile, in pipes that were 250 millimeters in diameter. 
The transported sludge was then cleaned using a special chemical compound, causing particles in the solution to separate and sink. The filtered water was then separated and returned to the site, while the particles remained in the geotubes. This documentary has been a long time in the making, and having gotten to talk to the makers of the Watermaster, we believe that their quality of service is noteworthy. Watermasters continue to be produced in Finland under strict manufacturing guidelines, using easy-to-repair parts that can be sourced from around the globe, wherever they might be needed. Every delivery includes on-site training by authorized Watermaster trainers right at the location of business, ensuring efficient and safe use of the vehicles. And that's all while making a unique machine that fits its niche exceptionally well. We would like to give a special thanks to the Watermaster team for their help making this video possible, and to you for watching. It's been a long time in the making, but we hope you got to enjoy learning more and watching this incredible machine in action. We hope to see you for our next documentary, and until then, have a good one.